start recording. Thank you, Robot China Voice. Okay. Um, how's everybody doing? I guess I heard a thing on uh, on how to make um, web presentations, and you should say instead of saying everybody, it doesn't feel it feels like you're talking to everybody else except for the person. And you're supposed to say things like "How are you?" So it makes it feel like you're talking to the individual person. Um, so how are you? <laughs> hey, Julia. Good to see you, Kaya. Hello. Uh, Estelle, how are you? Thumbs up, I hope. Um, okay, so two things. I'm sweating profusely. I just went out, I was on my bicycle and then I realized that I needed to mow the lawn before the rain came. So I ran outside and mowed the lawn like a crazy person. Then I ran inside, took a shower and it was like too hot for like the middle of the day, but I was covered in grass. And so now I'm up here ready for like an epic art session and there's just like sweat coming out my pores. So you're just gonna have to forgive me. <clears throat> but I think I'm going out to dinner tonight. So I'm also extra excited about that. <clears throat> um, all right, party people. You guys wanna try something? Um, you guys wanna try something hard today or easy? I should probably light my candle. And get the things going. Oh my gosh. Before I light my candle, let's do this. Um, can we try to draw the candle? I meant to do it in my adult class and um, I forgot. And this candle is so cool. It'll be a warm up. That sounds like the best exercise. <laughs> Stacy's back. She's, She's back. back. I uh, only caught the tail end of your etiquette uh, suggestion. Can you repeat that? Mm, I don't know what I was. I don't know what I said. Okay. Well, we can revisit that another time. Let me turn this light on. Does that make a difference? It really doesn't. Let me move this mm -hmm. over here. I've been obsessed with, oh, I can, I can show you the drawing that I did already. Does that make it better? I think it does. Oh man, that doesn't make it better. Do you have a dark piece of paper? It's gonna be so hard. What? No. Oh, why? <laughs> well, I just wondered if it would show any differently. Wow. That's so unbelievably gorgeous yeah all right this isn't going to take this isn't going to take like this will take like a half an hour no offense <clears throat> but i'm not going to last it any longer than that in fact i might even set my timer <clears throat> but i think drawing this is going to be really helpful for our next exercise well let me check the uh let me check what mac was going on hey two next sketches we did who were they by uh george uh thomas gainsborough Gainsborough, comma, Thomas, I believe, period. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, okay, let me find my good pad. All right, so let me zoom out. So I attempted to draw this once before. <clears throat> oh, wow. And I completely cheated, which is not really, there's no such thing as cheating. Um, so do you see how on the bottom down here there? Um, yes. I, 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 I traced it. I like, I went like this. And oh. I got like the bumps on that side. I wonder why they're not quite as bumpy. Anyway, yeah. it's, um, the, the, the idea that I think that my drawing if I pull, zoom in a little bit, my drawing expresses, which I was kind of pleased with, <clears throat> is that there's like a central column, a thin central middle. See the center? And then there's 
And I don't mm-hmm. know how they, and I don't know how they did this. I think they probably had a, a small piece of wax and then they took a string and wrapped it all the way around. So the outer part, you know, like the, the, the outer, the thicker, the thin stream, I think they wrapped it and then they dipped that whole thing in a couple more coats of wax. So it's not, and I just realized that right now. Um, and obviously I didn't understand it when I was sketching it. Cause look at how the, the middle isn't like lined up, which is kind of interesting. So maybe I'll maybe draw this a little bit differently. Oh, I bet you they used two separate. Yeah, that's what they did. They used two different strings. So I think this string relates to this one. All right. We don't need my drawing anymore. And maybe, maybe we'll just draw. Um, uh, torsos. No, we'll see. We'll figure. It. We'll figure this out. Is this? And uh, and it is like a serious thunderstorm outside. Is it? Th- is it storming where you all are, Stacy? Not yet. No, but it's quite gray. Uh, Miss Foley, are you are you in a storm? No. Okay. Cool. Maybe I'm I'm really far north. <clears throat> okay. So, without tracing. I wonder if there are three separate ones. No, wait, let me look. All right, this is gonna be so hard. All right, I'm gonna start with that. I'm gonna start with my little theory because I had the thought, so some, I think it might be right. So I'm gonna start with that inner, the thinner inner column. Thinner inner, okay. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if we should wrap it down or up, but maybe this is where the snake starts. I'm looking at this tip right here. So I, I needed some place to start. We could start with the base, but I don't know how wide it's going to be. So I'm just going to start with this top and oh, Mr. Messick. Oh man. What's up, Brayden? Is that you? Can you hear me? Um, he might not be able to hear us yet. Mm-hmm. Mr. Messick, can you hear me? Can I get a thumbs up? Nice. Okay. Um, to catch you up, we haven't really done the warm up. This is the warm up. Um, we're drawing this little candle um, that my my future mother in law gave me. And this is just a warm up, and it's just a kind of learning how to do a spiral or like a double helix is it's an interesting thing to get. I mean, it's a very powerful symbol, like the medical symbol where the two snakes are wrapping around it, the sign of Mercury, um, the double helix spiral itself. Um, it's just good to be able to practice, you know, something spinning around another another thing. <clears throat> it's a, just a fun, uh, you know, an art challenge, I guess. Okay, so I'm looking at the this first bend. Um, yeah, I want that first bend, and we'll see what that looks like. There's the outer part of the bend, and then there's the inner part of that loop. <clears throat> and then the interesting thing is that there really is a pretty sizable gap in between, you know, for better or for, for you know, I'm just for argument's sake, I'm just going to call them snakes. Um, so this snake wraps down this way. Then there's the second snake that makes the exact same, almost the exact same movement. It goes all the way outside our, our you know, the inner part of the wax. And it makes this beautiful S curve. And it starts from the far left hand side, crosses the front, and then it spins uh, down behind around. I mean, if you guys are interested in architecture, I mean, this is essentially what a spiral staircase does. Um, you know, this, but a twisted rag. Um, you wind up being able to do this with actually expressions. Um, you know, like in cartoons, you can like you can like take a person's head and like twist it like this, where like the eyes are over here, the nose is here, and the mouth is here, and it 
creates this like incredible movement, like being able to create a torque, you know, a, a, a twisting motion, even like this is like a screw. I mean, this must be how like an actual screw and a screwdriver um, works. So the, I, I haven't considered all of the kind of the universal, universal applications of, you know, of it. Um, I'm just trying to get this two dimensional spiral. Um, something tells me that there's going to be a front, there's going to be a top, and there's going to be an underside to each one of those, but let's not, let's just not go there yet. Okay, so this is the, we've done a partial, you know, this is almost like the first one was almost like an arc. The second one is clearly an S had that property. Now the third one starts on this bot on this far left hand side and you're I think for the first time getting a full rotation. So it starts from behind and it's S curving across the front and it's wrapping all the way around. That's really beautiful. Thanks Stace, I, I, I really think so too. And yeah. I'm not getting it. Like the, the other thing is if you look at the whole, the, the um, you know, one of the things to consider is like, you know, these, the, the outside, they all are gonna be basically lined up, you know? So this furthest out is gonna be lined up with maybe a little bit further out. And this is a little further out and this is a little further out. So maybe overall the actual notional space of the candle could be more of a triangle. Or maybe it's like, maybe it has this triangular tip and then it's, but even still, it's like, what I'm saying is it's like a, almost like an obelisk where, you know, the top is narrow and it gets wider yeah. it down, almost like a tree trunk. Um, and well, I, have, and I have this top one wider than the one below. So I'm mm -hmm. already, I mean, I'm already violating my, you know, sort of my rule. So it's, but that's why, that's why God made erasers or inspired man to make an eraser. Mm. Cool. I think this, some of the shading in here is gonna be really gentle. I love the reflective, these reflections that are happening on the inside mm -hmm. in the gap, the valley, and then the peak, and then the valley, yeah. and then the peak, and then the valley, and then the peak. And it's interesting because like the reflection of the light is a little bit different um, on each one. <clears throat> okay, so this was my first long term curve. And the next one, we get the full length too. So cool, we get, we get two. We get two entirely full length S curves. And, you know, it does wrap all the way around. And then we're going to get, you know, the, the base. <clears throat> so we're gonna get the next one, which wants to be full, but it doesn't, it stops, you know, at the base. And again, I'm, I'm getting the thickness by seeing that the inner part of the track touches that inner part of the small candle and then the outer track, you know, wraps around and it's gonna be terminated right here. <clears throat> you get to see a little bit of the inner and then we'll see this last spiral that bulges out at that base. And then um, the base, not to be underestimated, is um, is really beautiful too, and it has its set of wedges. Um, it's a trapezoid, though. Overall, you see the outside. Looks like my candle is a little bit more narrow than the one I'm sketching. Okay, fun details. <clears throat> um, we're not seeing, you know, we have to assume that the, you know, these spirals, you know, they, they, they come from behind, wrap around the front and then go back behind. So we're not gonna see the ones from behind. But if you look, um, if we get this wick in here, which will just be, I can, we can actually draw wicks later. Wicks are beautiful. Um, there are two strands that are kind of stitched together. Anyway, I'll call it a rectangle and then it's going to curve. You can see one of the spirals in the back. And then you can see the other spiral coming around, wanting to come around to the front. Almost like, these, almost like these little horns. One angle to the right, one angles to the left. This one also angles to the top. 
you know, this one's, this one's turning away from us. This one's coming away. This one's coming towards us. Yeah, really nice. And the whole thing is kind of dipped. So it does have a, um, this is a, gonna have a significant silhouette. Um, and again, this is where you can kind of like, I've, I've talked about this in other things where, you know, a lot of people would actually just like try drawing the silhouette and you can include the silhouette and watch this and go from this one. I don't even have to, and I can come down to this one. I can analyze the silhouette and emphasize it a little bit, but I'm getting the silhouette because I drew the forms on the inside. <clears throat> I didn't go from the silhouette into the forms on the, on the inside. Hopefully that made sense. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I, I'm just, cause I'm, I'm at a loss of kind of what to do and I'm a little scared to do the shadows. So I, I might even put these little highlights where it's reflecting the light and there's one that's in the valley. And then this is a peak on the track. And then there's another one in the valley. Then there's one in the peak, valley again, peak again, smaller, valley. And then a faint one on this on this peak or whatever. It's because I, I maybe I smudged it out or maybe it had some soot on it or something. It looks like there's some kind of, oh, I, it does have soot on it. I, I think I, when I was putting it in, um, I tried to melt the base of it so it would stick in better. And I made it all dirty, which was a mis probably a mistake. <clears throat> um, other interesting notions that um, if my light was in a different position, we could probably have a more dramatic shadow. Oh yeah. Oh, that's interesting. I know. That's so helpful. Well, oh my gosh. I don't know if I can leave it this way. Wow. That really allows that's just beyond helpful. Oh my god. Did I mention how helpful it is? All right, whatever. I will try to fix it. Let me leave it. Wow. Just going in the highlight reels. Oh, everything's all right. I'm going the house down. Did I put, I didn't even light it. Oh yeah, I, I, I can't, I couldn't light it. Oh no, I moved it. No, oh. I wish you did, Stacy. Oh my gosh. Trevor, Trevor, Trevor. How am I gonna get this to stay? Got an idea. I'm gonna need my blue appetite for this one. All right, I'm gonna try one other thing, y'all. Hopefully this isn't crazy. <clears throat> Is that better? I think it's better. Has I, I just got lost in my oh. mark making. <laughs> I hope your windows are up. Hope everybody's windows are up. Is it really storming there, Trevor? Yeah, big time. Stacy, did you see where I put my tortillion from this morning? Yeah, it's behind you over your left shoulder. Oh my God. Do you see it? Yes, it's my right shoulder, but you were so close. Um, <clears throat> all right, so the wax is wax. So it's semi-transparent. This is what makes this really interesting. And I want you guys to um, kind of think about it. 
Um, don't think about it like, so you wanna think about it having the exact same properties as skin. Skin is really difficult to paint because everyone looks, you know, they learn to paint objects that like wood and, you know, like fabric and generally things that you can't see through. And, you know, if you look at sheer fabric, you can like kind of see through it. You think about glass, you can like really see through it. Um, like skin, you can't, you're like, you think it's a solid object, but what's actually happening is you're like, you're actually seeing through like a number of different layers of um, very thin cells. And, you know, you can, and you know, the way you can think about that is like, if you've ever seen like somebody that that's like the sun's shining behind them and like their ears like light up from behind and you know, yeah. it's hilarious because they're bright red. Um, that's like what all of your skin is like. Um, so you can see through that much of it. And so then it absorbs light in a really weird way. Um, and the transitions are really subtle. So like, yeah, you can have a hard, harsh shadows, you know, light side, shadow side, but really with skin, it's like way more subtle than that. Um, and, you know, that's what's happening here. Like the wax is like a semi-transparent material. And, um, and so therefore it has this aggressive shadow, but then if you look inside of, if you look inside of the, the object itself, the shadows are not harsh, like at all. Um, and it's really, it's really kind of an interesting thing. So you kind of have to like squint your eyes hard and there's very few lines too. So it's all like tonal um, on the inside. You know, the silhouette lines, because it's a, it, it, it's a um, on the right side here, it's a dark object up against a light ground. So I'm just gonna kind of use the pigment that's already on my paper. I'm just gonna kind of try to blend that and soften it, knowing that there is a, a relatively crisp edge. Um, would I, you know, if I had to need an eraser, would I smooth it out? Probably, I would probably lighten it almost a little bit and I might, I might do that later, but this is a warm up, so I'm just not trying to, I'm just trying to develop a unity and I'm trying to understand like the lights coming from the top right. And honestly, I'm really trying to understand why we're not getting shadows. It's weird. I mean, it's in, and it might be, it might be like an extra special type of wax too. Um, so when I'm shading, I'm going to think about, um, I'm going to save those highlights. I'm going to kind of intentionally not, I'm going to intentionally blend out the line that I use for the highlights so I can maintain the white of the paper for my, for my brightest part of the element. And then I'm gonna try and basically tie it all together with like a, a, a subtle tone. You know, like I can't, there's almost this little horn that's at the top. I can't tell what direction it's going in. I can't, there's no light and shade to it. It's just, it's just like a silhouetted you know, outline, which in a way is easier because then there's like less information that you have to include. But in another way, it's like, I'd like to know what's going on there. <laughs> Um, so there's a, there's a thing where it's called like lost and found where there's like a line, you need a line or you have an object and it's the, the separation between one, one object and another is so subtle that you lose, you, you lose the identity. And if you check out the shadow from the wick, the shadow from the wick up here, the, it, it's like so similar to the, the, the tone of the wax that like, it almost seems like it blends together. And the lost and found, we know that there's a separation down here with this, you know, our outer snake and the, the center column, but it's almost indistinguishable. The connection between the two, um, probably because the way it was dipped. Now, up on the left side where there are more significant shadows, you, know, you can kind of get a clarity of separation between, um, you know, the lighter snake and then the darker column or the darker column here. And then a really intense, I mean, I haven't even drawn the shadow shape and that's kind of a fail. I'm gonna, I'm gonna as soon as I like tie up together, maybe this like top third, um, I'm gonna draw the shadow. But I'm just kind of, and <clears throat> we did the, the line work essentially was, you know, like a, a like a coloring book lines and then what, we're, what I'm doing here with the tone is basically coloring. It's coloring with, um, you know, with, with just with tonality. 
and we will be able to, you know, if we need to manipulate things with lights and darks. I, um, my pencil can only go so dark. So I'm looking at my wick and it's clearly the darkest part of the entire picture. There's a little bit of soot down here. You know, even like the deepest part of the shadow that's at, that's at the base here, um, you know, that is like, it's not even close to being as dark as the wick. I mean, the wick is just a really, um, a beautiful sooty, um, you mm -hmm. know, charcoal. It's like a charcoal black. It's like, it's, it's kind of as dark as you can get. So if you were to, you know, if you have a value scale, you know, nine being the lightest, one being the darkest, it's a one. And my graphite will not go that dark. I would need paint or I would need charcoal. There's some charcoal, some like uh, like cherry wood charcoal goes like, that's like this deep, like almost like purplish, um, you know, value. Um, okay, so here we go. I, I'm gonna stay true to what I said where I'm just gonna try and unify this. And so I, I really am amazed how much I didn't think about this as having the, the command of the sop of the object, the beauty of the object really comes through in the in the silhouette. Because of the subtlety and how the light takes to the uh, the rest of it. And all of the marks that I used in those construction lines. I mean, I'm like desperate to smooth those out. Because because that's the that's the nature and those are the kind of the, like the properties of the of the wax. I'm not smoothing it out because they're mistakes. I'm smoothing it out because I'm trying to allow my graphite to mimic um, the nature of the, the wax. And it's not easy to do. It's, it probably would be easier to do with paint. But even that is a even that is a trick. Mm -hmm. Love my little wax shadow. Okay, so all the information that we're looking at is not. It's not left out. So um, I got a little zigzag at the top. Okay, so the wax kind of hangs over. And I think this first swell down, this swell here is this shadow here. And then this little pinch right here is this pinch here. So look at the, the distance between this point and that point. They're at a pretty steep angle. That angle is the angle of the light. So you can imagine the point that I just made, this little arrow point here, and then this little arrow point there, that vector is the direction of the light. And I, so made, that's, and I made it too shallow, so I got to make it a little steeper. That's the deepest, uh, the darkest of the shadows are on the left side. Um, I mean, compared to everything else, except for the wick, I would say the cast shadow is the darkest part. Okay. But, you know, watch what we're gonna have to do. This whole left side, the whole left side of the candle is a um, is light up against the dark cast shadow. Right. And, the, and ironically, the side of the candle that's in the light, that's get the, gets getting the most amount of light, it making a dark object up against the white of the paper. And that's just because it's, the paper is, you know, the object of the wax is darker than the object of the paper. And they're receiving the same amount of light. All right, so this curve here, this curve here, this is gonna be a pain in my bum. Actually, it's gonna be easier on this side because I didn't shade it. So what I was saying is I'm gonna have to like, oh, do I remember my electric eraser? This would be, this would be a time for an electric eraser. I knew I should have bought that second one. We were at the art store, one got donated to the school and I was like, this thing is ridiculous. Who needs an electric eraser? Well, there's a little gray. Right. I was like, that's so excessive. Like, that's so extra. I was like, even I'm not that extra. And then I busted it out and started using it. And it was awesome. And I highly recommend everybody else get one. And I liked it so much that I almost bought another one. Is that the rain I'm hearing in the background? Yeah. Wow. Okay, so I just gauged my cast shadow by the, you know, these little 
you know, these little intersection points. So I found the intersection point, found how deep it was, and then curved it in. Deep, and then curved in. Deep, and then curved down. And then finally, we've made it to the bottom. And then we'll get to do the bottom this way. It's a little, it's, it's like a little scary. Wow, that I sounds know. so cool. That's cool. Are the, um, are the dogs afraid of the thunder or they're good? Okay. Uh, I don't know. I might run down and check on them actually. In the spirit of this saying I would only last a half hour, I'm just going to try and lay in these sides, these shadow shapes. If the lights go out, don't worry, I've got a candle. You know, graphite, you'll get to know how to lay and not, you know, lay directional strokes down in order to get the amount of pigment that you need to blend out into a, into something that's really smooth. Okay, hold on, I gotta run down and check on the dogs. I think I hear something. I'm not back in five minutes, just wait longer. <laughs> no, it won't be that long. Okay, so now I have to figure out how to get this, good goodness. I almost had to redraw my silhouette just to make it light enough. Um, so yeah, guys and gals, um, students, this is the part where you're like, this is the worst thing I've ever drawn in my whole life. And then, but you're only like a third of the way through or halfway through, or maybe even like 70% through, but it looks it, like you get to a point where it looks so, you think it looks so bad. And you just gotta maintain faith and maintain hope, and we'll uh, we'll we'll tie it. we'll we'll pull it together. You'll see, even without an electric eraser. <clears throat> I'll be back. We'll be here. Wow, it is like a um, tropical, not a tropical storm, but it is really coming down here. Stairs. How are they? They're good. Bella had come up. Oh, Bales, I Bella. Bales couldn't get in. There's Mr. Bales. Hey, Mr. Bales. You mean he, couldn't, everybody. he couldn't get in. What does that he mean? He only got three legs. Oh, so what do you mean he stairs. couldn't get in? He couldn't get up the stairs. Oh, 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 oh. He's not scared though. Good. My granny used to tell me it was the gods bowling. I have heard that. The thunder.
All right, so overall, I think I went too, too dark with all my tones at the top. And I'm gonna try and keep it light towards the bottom. See if I can get something that is similar. But, you know, you can think about it. You know, there is really a top, an underside, you know, and a top side. So it's really hard to see. I think it's really hard to see. And then there are these, almost like these little prisms that are thick to thin. So um, I'm, I'm thinking the lights are flashing. We haven't lost energy, we haven't lost power here, but it wouldn't surprise me if the lights go out. So if the lights go out, I'll, uh, you know, I'll try to come back. And then if not, we'll just call it a day. So I'm really desperately trying to get, <clears throat> I went a, even still a little bit too dark on, uh, on my base, but rather than trying to lighten the base, I'm gonna really go heavy on my shadow. And that might, that might be nice. Mm -hmm. I think I might give it some, I might give it some pop. I mean, I went light, pretty light as it is um, on my shadow. So I can just try, and this is as, I mean, this is as bold as my graphite's able to go. If you're working with charcoal, you can go even darker. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to punch my darks. <clears throat> That's me, you know, pulling some of the the, um, the darkness just from my tortillion, and looking at some of these some of the moments inside the the uh, candle, and you know, just applying them. I had kind of had done like this nice mid tone all the way through, but there are some there are some dark notes on the you know, on the far side of the column and on the and as the as that spiral turns around to the outside, yeah, and I have found that uh, what you just did, you went back in and really made your shadow darker. I absolutely need to do that. And you know, my my little circles for the highlights are just are ridiculous. They are not useful anymore, and they're just—they're almost calling too much attention to the highlights. So I'm glad that the place setting was up on available. But I—I I, I just I'm erasing it, and I'm going to try and achieve those same highlights by shading around them rather than drawing around them. You know, toning around it rather than drawing around it. You know, linearly. And <clears throat> I don't know how many times I have to say it, but go for my electric eraser right now. And the electric eraser would be able to pull out these little, like that, like really efficiently pull out those, those light highlights in the wax. Yeah. in a way that just our regular racers just don't do. There's even highlights in the base. It's kind of nice. Okay. So I went 15 minutes over. Sorry, I'm not sorry. Um, so I'm punching the darks inside the form and then I can add a couple notes outside the form. And then I'm also noticing that there's a couple lights that can be punched um, right on the, like right in the far outside of each one of these spirals. So pleasantly 
uh, edged with a mm -hmm. you know, contrast. Yeah, I really so would have been expressed. That. Would have been expressed really nicely with a um, an electric pen. Oh man. Um, but the, this is going to be really helpful for the piece that we actually are going to draw today. Um, I didn't, I haven't tried it yet, but some of my students from this morning tried it and it was good. And it's, I think it should just, a, it's just something that's really gorgeous. I think it has a simple, like simple technical applications but collectively will be a really beautiful object. And it's from, a, um, it's archaic. It's actually from uh, the period, the archaic period in Greek art, which is right before classical. All right, Stace, did you finish? Did you uh, finish? Sure. Oh. I think That's I'm as finished as that, excuse me? No, sorry, I was going to say I'm also going to diffuse the edge of my shadow to make sure that my shadow feels like it's ephemeral. Like, you know, like it's a, uh, the blended edge of the shadow makes it, you know, feel like it's not a physical object. So it's the absence of light. Sorry. Okay, yeah. It's got, did, can I see yours? Sure. Mm -hmm. Whoa, very interesting. It's a little small. Yeah, I uh, I wasn't seeing. able to make my twirlies uh, farther apart. I seem right, to right, have. Right. Yeah, they got like the spring got tight. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and I think that the wider uh, is much more elegant. Um, so the one thing I can, the one thing I'm pretty sure of, no, I'm not really even sure of that. I guess if I had, if I had like color, mm -hmm. this, one, this top one here. Yeah. This top one here. Is that this one down here? Yeah, that compute that really. <laughs> so <and> then, <laughs> I so couldn't think of that too here, much. This one here skips two and then comes out down here. I think there's three separate strands. One, two, three. So one goes to here, two goes to here, and three starts back there. <clears throat> yeah, I think there's three separate chords. So who else would like to show? Oh yeah, does anybody else want to show? I don't really like my, I'm not sure I want to show. Anybody else have any courage? And even if you're not finished, that's that's really fine. That's okay to still show. It's not okay. You should be done. Stop it. You guys are trying to do Trevor, it. yours is beautiful. I really like the, um, you really see the twirl of the wax so beautifully. The wrapping, or so, whatever you'd like to refer to it as. So nice. I can't even sometimes. 
You mean how great your artwork is? You just can't even sometimes. I just can't even handle all of your wonderful smells. Oh. All right, so yeah, I just added some of these little striations. These little like all tonal before. And I don't know, I felt like it was a little boring. I'm just gonna give it a little structure. I might be ruining it, but I don't care. I like that these are, is it tubular? Is that what these are? Tubular? Tubular. <laughs> I, mean, yeah. I mean, it's pretty right. cool. I mean, it's pretty cool. I'm glad we did this. I'm glad I didn't have to do it by myself. <laughs> so. And I really like the, uh, I don't know what you would call it, the base that you put into the candle holder. Thank you. That, I was actually- well totally Sure. Anyone change their mind about sharing? Okay. <clears throat> All right. Ooh, Kristen showed up. Hi, Kristen. She's working. Okay. All right. I am ready for the next one. It's so scary what we're about to do. Ooh, that's interesting. We're not going to do that, though. Right. That would have applications. Oh, right. Oh, right. Oh, right. Oh, right. OK, so let me talk about this piece. Um, and luckily for figure drawing, there's no nudity for once in Greek art. <laughs> I'm sure Sebastian's not trying to get one. OK, cool. Um, all right, let's try this next one. It's gonna be so, it's like the, the detail that we're gonna draw um, is the reason I chose this piece. Um, this is my, this is the actual book, believe it or not. But I went online and I found I like higher resolution images. I suspect this is, this, I don't know, I don't know if this is close to the color. Um, it's archaic. Um, this was a, this was like a, a soldier, a, a citizen soldier. So he basically was free, he owned property, but he also fought in the military and then he got, he died. And so this was a monument to him. And uh, it's very, very, uh, very sensitive and really beautiful. The pieces, this is probably like probably the finest, one of the finest sculptures from this particular era. Um, and I'll go in and we'll talk about some, some of the, some of the interesting details. Um, just on a side note, um, what we were talking about with the, um, the softness of the wax marble has a similar feel, which is why marble is kind of ideal to, to sculpt humans. Um, and, you know, it has this kind of like almost transparent feel to it. But the light is coming from the left here. The example that I'm going to show, um, the lighting is from the opposite side. So, you know, his shoulders here are in light and then the silhouetted line, the shadow edge is in the front. Same thing with his arm. There's like light on the back of his arm, mid-tone for the arm and then shadow for the front. And it's like, that's what low relief sculptures do. They're like mostly drawing, but then they're like pulled off of the, the um, surface to get a uh, little dimension. So it has a slightly more lifelike feel. And then this sculpture was actually painted at one point as well. Um, all right, so let's look at some of the, um, better um, photographs um, from, from this. And hopefully we don't get too many reflections. <clears throat> uh, let me see if I can put my light back since we don't need it. I 
So the figure, um, you know, he's an athlete, he's like strong or whatever. Um, and the interesting thing, one of the interesting, one of the, there's many actually kind of interesting things about um, the sculpture. Um, one is that it takes place um, in what's called a frieze. And that is this basically a marble slab. Um, and, you know, you can look at the back end of this picture and, you know, the guy, the artist, you know, the sculptor just used almost like every square inch of this piece of marble, you know, to fit this guy into the picture. Um, and I'm just imagining like this big piece of paper, big piece of tracing paper. He had this piece of, he had this stone and then he traced the stone onto paper and then made the drawing to like fit exactly the right size. And then he's holding a stick. Um, <clears throat> again, it looks kind of, if you're not into like classical art or archaic art, it doesn't look like much, um, <clears throat> but where some of the really beautiful moments happen um, are in the details. So the, the couple interesting points about this piece in general is we know who the artist is, um, which is rare from this period. This is where like 800, this is like 500 BC, you know, um, the it's, uh, Aristocles was the artist. Um, and I can't remember what the guy's name is. I guess the guys, the, the guy that it's a portrait of is, um, Aristian. I guess that's how you pronounce it, Aristian. And then the artist is, uh, Aristocles. Um, so I'll see if I can look that, if I can like write that down in my, when I make the drawing, remind me to write that down on the, on the piece so we can, we can look it up. Um, and he's wearing, um, he's wearing this armor, this like light leather armor um, on his shoulders, like shoulder pads. And then he's got this kind of semi-transparent, the very light folded, um, you know, shirt underneath, you know, a sleeved shirt underneath the, um, the armor. He's got this little, he's got this little um, hat on the, which, you know, they, they guys, they knew what type of, you know, the, in, if you go to Wikipedia, the title of this piece is the steel of Aristian. Um, and they, you know, the other, um, there's this also this really beautiful, um, like waist, um, like kind of like leather, you know, it's almost like a mini skirt um, around his waist that is almost the exact dimensions of, uh, the pelvis so um it seems like it was like it would, it would be protective but also like maximize mobility um and then the the this drawing right here of the way that this fabric um you know is folded and expressed in this stone just you know kind of blew my mind um and i have a, like a really high resolution detail of that that we'll get to we'll get to sketch but um, the light is coming from the upper right. So you can see just like with the candle, you know, the right side is light. There's a midtone in the middle and there's a cast shadow. So all the planes that angle to the ground are dark. And then all the planes that angle to the right um, uh, are in, you know, are on the light side. You can see the arm here more obviously. The right side is light. The, the flat part of, where the light scrapes across the front is midtone. And then you get the shadow side as that arm rolls away from the light source. And you know, the, the amount that it's lifted off of the ground throws a shadow um, on the ground. So this is the low resolution image. And this is the other um, you know, really beautiful part is, um, I have to go on Wikipedia because I can't remember. It was the first time I heard the word last night, but they're these metal, um, these form fitting metal shin guards. Um, that were really popular with mm -hmm. with Greek soldiers, and it would go above the ankle, and apparently your your shin bone, you know, in war, um, is really close to the skin, so it makes you really vulnerable. And if it gets injured, you know, or or like hit with, you know, hit injured in any way, it really renders you know the person immobile, and it's like extremely vulnerable after that. So um, these look like kneecaps, but they're actually formed metal. Um, so it's like a stylized, uh, you know, shin guard for for battle, and there, you know, it was also very mobile. You could you could move around in that as well. And this guy's, you know, this guy's barefoot. I can't imagine they'd go to battle barefoot. And I, I think that this is probably like 
you know, not his complete armaments. You know, I mean, I'm sure like the this leather, there's like the shirt, then there's the leather strap, and then there's the actual breastplate made of bronze or, you know, probably bronze that would go over top of it. Um, so we, we got through a lot um, this morning and we sculpted the, let's see if I can zoom in here. Look at this other like kind of anomaly. We couldn't figure out what was going on with the face. Um, it looks like he had had a pointy beard at one point and then either got chipped mm -hmm. or they tried to remove it or they tried to fix it. Um, not really sure what happens there, but thinking about the eyelid, you know, the eyes as a, um, you know, catching the light, you know, the top is the top of the eyelid is in light. The upper eyelid that faces down is in shadow. The actual top of the eyeball is lighter, goes more to mid tone and the underside of that eyeball is dark, lower lid light. And then the, um, the shadow side, it's almost like this like beautiful almond um, you yeah, know, that's been, or almost like a, almost like a pomegranate that's been opened up, um, that eye, but the, you know, the, the beard, the beard is a trip. It's just like this. Yeah. Thing. Right. Yeah. And like, I don't know if they used, I guess there's almost straight lines. Like it just looks like a, it looks like a stream or like a waterfall, you know, almost like a cartoon waterfall and they just like zigzag, 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 zigzag. So we had a question in the, this morning where they're like, you know, is this, is this like, did they draw, was this, um, did they draw, were they sculpting an actual person or were they, or were they making a sculpture that was in the style of the period? And the, the answer is that it's actually both, which is so interesting. So they were drawing like, you know, the properties of a soldier. They were drawing like, you know, this is how beards were represented. Um, but it was an actual portrait of a real, like a real man. Um, so I'm sure the, you know, his nose had a likeness, you know, the distance between his nose and his mouth, you know, like I'm sure there was a likeness to the properties. I'm sure his beard was this way. There's like a thousand different ways that you could have a beard. Um, and this was, you know, probably characteristic of, you know, this exact person. Um, so that's why it's so, that's why it's so wonderful because it, it is in fact a portrait, but it's also a, um, one of the most characteristic um, um, sculptures uh, that defines the style um, of this era. Um, had to, I got to show you this too. The, Love the fingers. I know the fingers and the cuticles are just yeah very cool and very um, very Michelangelo actually. Um, but they've got the you know you know the. You know, this, this, the yeah. nails went straight across the top and then curved in the cuticle beds. And I've seen it go the exact opposite. Um, they almost, the, the nails themselves almost look like the, like the shape of a, like a gumdrop or, you know, like candy corn or something. But not a lot of detail actually, but a huge thumb, look how big his thumb is. I think it's a monster. All right. Bum, 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 bum. I wonder if I can drop the brightness down a little bit. That will help. Mm -hmm. um, this sculpture was actually painted. So this is a later version. You can see on his arm, there was like a, like a sun. And then I guess there was some other, some other decorative element. <laughs> I'm trying to get the right. My poor. Oh, no. Leave it. 
All right, maybe it was a mistake to make the uh, make the brightness. Let's try it this way. Hold on. Bear with me, everybody. Yeah, I think that's way better. Look this up. Okay, I'm gonna slide this over a little bit so I can get a little bit more real estate on my right side. And, you know, and then I wanna make this straight and that straight, and then I'll straighten this out this way. Okay, cool. Maybe this won't take as long as I thought. I'm looking at it, I'm like, huh, oh, it's kind of like, um, Stacy asked a question at the very beginning when everyone was coming in where she was like, is, is like, tone more important like shading more important or is um or is line more important and i uh it's so difficult it's so difficult to say um and i'm just going to talk about both of those properties as we go um again like the wax this is very subtle so we do have um line work which is the underside of the fabric um I don't know what you want, buddy. Want some attention? Oh, no, I'm sorry. You want to go down? Aww. Bell, boo. Bellas? Bang on, Bellas. Oh, there's Bella. Okay, cool. Um, all right, so we're, what, we, what we have is very gentle lines, um, soft lines on the side and dark lines underneath. And they're all like attempting to show like a layered fabric. So if you look at how this works, the part of the fabric that's closest to us is right here. And then it S curves and <coughs> this fold is in front of this fold. And then this fold is in front of this fold. And then this fold is in front of that fold. And if you look at it, they almost make like little prisms or almost like um, they look sort of like tents. You know, like yeah. this is an A-frame tent. And then you have the, the top of the tent and then you can go in the tent. And this is the top of the tent and then you can go in that tent. Um, so in addition to um, you know these layers, this in front of this in front of this, there's really only four, you know, there's four kind of, you know, elements, and then they're going to be mirrored on the other side. Um, so I keep looking up here and seeing like the letter T. Um, and then this is the, you know, this is the hand that's happening. So to be able to get like a folded fabric with these delicate lines to make it feel like this is stone, like this is marble. Um, so I'm just kind of standing in awe of the like the subtlety that was able to be achieved to get a light transparent fabric to read in, you know, a solid zone. Um, so it's relatively low relief and team, you can see it like it's, we can, we can, we can like approach this as if it were um, a drawing. I mean, you, in a way you don't even need to see it like a sculpture because all of the properties of it are so draftsman oriented um you know that that it shouldn't even be that intimidating um all right so i'm going to start with my the first line up here which is going to be this little squiggle so part of what the property of making the fabric um feel light and ephemeral and and like that there's movement to it um i think has to do with like the 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 
you know, the, the flow, the, 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 um, the movement of the line, the ebb and the flow, you know, ebb is up, flow is down, the up and down of, you know, the, the line work. So right now, even like the line work itself um, at the base, you know, it's going to, is going to feel lighter. And then, you know, the folds themselves, um, we'll, we'll check them later, but they, they look like relatively straight lines, but they also look like they bellow outwards. So let's see if I can pull this thing back together. All right, first things first, um, we're going to use the ebb, low, up, down, and over. All right, that's our beginning. That's the top. That's the, um, the, 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 the top of this fold. And we can do the, you know, the plane of this fold. So the, it's coming down from underneath of the fingers. So I taught this drawing to these kids the other day where there was like, I called it broken line. So even though the top of the fabric runs horizontal, um, you know, it, it expires right here, but then it's gonna actually fold down this side. So this is the, the side angling down, and then this is the edge that wiggles down as well. <clears throat> so unlike all the other folds, there's gonna be two moments where the fold goes up the tunnel. So the fold goes here, the fold goes there, and then it's going to spiral down into the right, and then it's gonna spiral down into the left. Oh. Ah. I hope, yeah, that's not, this is not <laughs> easy. Um, so then this rolls up, this rolls up, and then we're gonna get the other side. So you can even think about it in terms of color. So if I used a, well, maybe we'll just use value because we're drawing. So I'm gonna make the top um, of my fabric a little bit lighter, the top side of the fabric lighter, and then make the underside darker. So this becomes the top of the fabric on this side doesn't connect, so it's gonna wiggle down. Um, that's the key, is that there's a break in the fabric. So the top of the fabric edge here doesn't connect to the side of the fabric here. Fascinating. And it does that to help it turn the corner. And I think I almost connected it there. All right, so if I get some definitions going, um, I'm gonna shade a little bit of the top of this one so I can see what's top and what's inside. Um, I'm gonna use a straight line, but I'm gonna have it have a little bit of a bow to it. Oh, so you're bowing out. I would. I don't know why it was bowing in. Well, I, well, I'm seeing this bow out. Yes. Uh, on the left side. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. Right I am as well, but I, for some reason, was drawing it. All right. So it comes down. It goes angles in, angles out, angles in, and then it's got to fold under itself as well. So we'll do this. And with each, <clears throat> each um, step, like each, you know, this is our, um, our first tent. And then there's the second tent. But after each tent, the, the tents get further and further apart. <clears throat> and that's kind of, I think that might be one of the really beautiful aspects of it is how they separate. Um, and they seem to get lar larger. So edge of the full of the fabric and then the expressed fold of the fabric. And then, oh, I did it again. Not to quote Britney Spears, but. 
um, I connect it here. And so my fold is what is what turns the corner. And then as I do the inside of this fold, that is what is able to turn the corner here. And I'm not following the, um, the, the wiggle like exactly. I'm just, I, I'm, I'm at this point, I'm like, okay, I know what it does. And so I'm going to do it. I'll, I'll make it uh, the way that I would make, that I would make it. And then I probably, you know, I just got into this right side. I did the, so I did the bottom too. And that edge is going to fold out of the bottom and go out of the picture. Mm. Um, my line work on the right side feels very, very heavy to me. And I may have to go back in and adjust that line work, but I think they're in the right spot. It looks like the line is correct. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm probably, this is probably foolish to attempt to put the, the fingers in here, but maybe just as a stand in. All right, let's try the, uh, let's try the left side. First, second, yep, did that wrong. I finally grasped it. I mean, it's like pulling teeth. I mean, I swear. I mean, so it's like this wiggle has to has to connect. I mean, it has to be part. It has to flow into it, but it can't connect. Yeah. Same thing on this side. So this bellows out, and then it's got to follow that. It's got to be able to meet meet it, but it can't connect to it. And then this one comes down here, joins without touching. And then this side goes under without touching that either. So Stacy, I don't know if you, I mean, it's just so amazing when you think about that, the, um, the broken line lessing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I didn't, I wish all of you guys were there. I mean, I can show you guys the broken line lesson drawing. It's hilarious. It's, I drew this doggy. I don't call all dogs doggies, trust me. But this was, these were two doggies. All right, so just to give you an idea, this is my doggy drawing. Um, it was for the kids class. And, you know, we did the nose and then we did the mouth and you can draw the outline of the, the arms and the belly and the back um, and the tail. And you can draw all those lines without connecting them. They're just like separate, you know, the, the, the connection is implied. The connection is inferred. Um, especially if you look at this guy's ear you know, one of the lines had, one of the ears had a literal triangle on the outline. And then the next one didn't, it just had these, you know, these little furry hash, hatch marks that imply the connection. And, you know, this is obviously on a, uh, you know, like a much higher level. Where'd we go? You know, this is on a, like a more sophisticated level and a more challenging kind of concept. But it, the, the idea is the same. It's like instinctively we want, we're always trying to like connect lines and, you know, maybe you can, you know, you can imply uh, more subtle separations by not having the lines touch. I'm speaking without my, uh, with it, I'm being muted. I think that this is very similar for me to the whole snake concept. 
which is um, a little bit, well, it's challenging for me. And it's also a pattern that I just can't take my eye off of to get it right. If that's. Yeah. So I'm gonna use some of the pigment that's already here, especially on these heavy lines. I'm like, so do I need to like erase the lines or can I blend the lines into the dark, you know, by minimizing the contrast? I probably still have to erase, but. There seems to be these, you know, light lines, um, dark lines, and then light tones and mid tones. I do like clarifying in my mind, at least, you know, the top of the fabric versus the inner part of the fabric versus skin. So now I don't know if you know this, but this part, the part in the middle, this is skin. This is his thigh. So if we were in paint, it would be a heck of a lot easier. So Trevor, is that the same line work as the draping on the shoulder? Uh, I think so. I mean, I kind of want to find out. And we actually have a good amount of time. I thought this was going to take a lot longer than it did. And I think I could maybe, you know, when I say punch, you know, I'm going to, I don't think I can pull out any more lights, but um, I can definitely, the, the, the swivel of the, like the thickness of the underplane of the fabric this way and that way, just the underside. I may darken those lines a little bit more, kind of overdo it lightly. Just because, I mean, I don't have to be as subtle as he is. Yeah, I can, I should try. I'm just not a, uh, I don't want to be too self-deprecating. No, no, no. I do like having the hierarchy of line even in my drawing. I mean, I'm not using marble. You can get away with very, very fine lines. My graphite is just so soft. This is the big pencil. It is a soft, it is a soft material. So it's harder to be subtle. Because of its hardness, um, the uh, marble is just perfect for um, really subtle effects. And, you know, there's a, there's it's, men sculpted like, you know, fishing nets, like entire fishing net nets. Um, it's just, it's just so hard and, um, and so beautiful of a, of a and, and, and it's a very forgiving, it's a very forgiving uh, medium. Certainly takes time to pound it out though. You just pound, you just like, you just pound away at that stone with a, with a hammer and a chisel. Like. <laughs> Had an Armenian friend in art school who got into school um, by his, stone sculpture, marble sculptures. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's interesting. They were really beautiful. I mean, he, he had, I mean, he had, there was a, he had come from a, you know, a tradition of stone carving. And, you know, he had all the right tools and it was kind of really Yeah. Cool. His work was really interesting. i tell you what, they don't get along with the Turks and Armenians don't get along very well, that's for sure. You guys can look that up. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> 
grow bellas. Look at everybody. Storm's over. Everything's fine. <clears throat> I'm gonna leave my drawing up. Hopefully that helps, but I'm gonna just wanna take a quick peruse through here and see if we can see if there's another detail that would be fun to try. That beard is hilarious. We could try these. We could try his upper arm. It's a similar idea. Let's try. I think we should try that actually. It's similar idea. All right. I'm gonna go. Let me. Uh, I'll go back, and you guys can take a two minute, two minutes on the, uh, on this one, and then we can. Now that we understand kind of like what what is what's was actually happening, um, we can zoom out a little bit, and we'll be able to get a similar. Uh, see how the two designs are separate. And then the last thing we'll do is <clears throat> I'll zoom in on his, uh, on what the shoulder design might have been that was like actually painted on those remnants of it. Um, but I gotta take this dog out or else she's gonna make a mess. So I'll be back in uh, three minutes. <clears throat> Is this super, super challenging for, for anyone other than myself? Yes, very. Oh, I'm but so glad I I'm not alone. <laughs> I got through it. The less I seem to think about it, um, the easier it is. And, you know, the more I do it, the more confidence I have. But it's, it's challenging for me. It is. Does anyone want to show how they are thus far? Ah, fully. Okay, put that a little closer to you and a little bit down and freeze. That's beautiful. Now, did you put the yellow in? Uh, my other markers bled through, so. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, I like that effect. I like what happened there. <laughs> Very nice. Very nice. Would anyone else like to share? Mr. Messick? Kaya? Uh, Estelle? Maybe in a little bit. Okay, that's fine. That's all good. Yeah, I seem to go one direction and then I'm like, oops, that's not the right direction. <laughs> so it's one of those like, it's okay, try again and again and again. And here I go, yet again. And part of, I guess, what helps me is that I'm thinking that it's like a Christmas tree, the way it fans out. That seems to be helpful to me. And I like what uh, Trevor was talking about as far as the broken lines. That, that too is really helpful. And I think I might have gotten it. Oh, I don't wanna be so sure so soon. Uh, so the fabric, the width of the fabric going up gets wider as it goes out. Is anyone else seeing that? 
Uh, uh, I think that's right. I think I may have gotten it. Let's see it, please. The shading isn't there, but I think maybe the lines are there. Oh, is that right? Yeah. No. Sorry about that. That's right. Nice, you did a ton. Those lines are right? It looks kind of right to me. Okay. The other thing that made it hard is that it was at an angle. Excuse me? I said what made it a little bit difficult is that it was at an angle. Oh, the way I showed it to you? No, no, no. The way that it's the way that it's shown in on the screen. Oh, oh, oh. I see. Well, Excuse me. All right, let's try this last one. Okay, so there's this angle. I only shaded the top pink folds because sure. shading for me takes a long time because I don't have a quotillion. But okay. yeah. Oh yeah, no doubt. Um, well, let's see it. This one's beautiful. Yeah, you uh, definitely got it. You definitely got the idea on this one. Just like with um, shading, I go all in or I really don't do it at all because yeah. I just don't have that self control to shade lightly. I well, know. you did the you did the underside darker, which gives that dimension. It gives that depth, so that reads nicely. That's what I was going for. Oh, this is a different version. It's not a different version. It's just like the same style, same style, different breeze. Uh, what if it's the same artist? Hmm. Anyway, um, let's, do, let's do this last one. I guess we'll be good. So unfortunately, we don't have the... Uh, uh, oh man, should we do it in reverse? Why did it feel like it got darker? All right, yeah, sweet. Okay, so this is the one. Um, this is one that I have, and then this is twofold. Why won't it show up in this one? That's a stupid. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, There you go. That's beautiful. Yeah, no, I think it works. And then you can see the, you can see the, the what was painted, the sun that was painted on this. Yeah. But you can't see Oh anything. my gosh. That's no. marvelous. All right, so hold on, I'm gonna try and do it like this. Oh my God, that's magical. It's a very special piece. Edit this down. <clears throat> That's really, really wild. My dog. Well, that was the right decision. Awesome. All right, cool. So you're gonna have to use your imagination for some of the, like the star, but you could, I mean, this could be like a whole separate thing. You just, you see there's like a star here and then there's like, I'm not sure if there's a, a that's going south, like how many rays, you know, even like equilaterally, how many rays come out. <clears throat> All right, I'm gonna focus on, I'm gonna focus on the arm and see if we can, um, it might be nice because we have the back of the arm here and then we have the arm pit um, and the biceps right here. So his shoulder is all above this. So it's almost like this is like a tattoo, like on his shoulder. And then the, the shoulder pads come across, you know, like kind of the base of his deltoid. Then the, the bicep comes in there. Um, so I think what we should do is start with this arc. 
if we can start with that arc, then we can build, um, this is gonna be much more cohesive because we can actually see the entire object. Um, yeah, it's gonna be, it's gonna be a, a much bigger, I think it's gonna be a much bigger win. And I think I have enough room on here. <clears throat> and I don't want to say ironically, but even if you're not finished the first one, this one should still be able to help it. I'm wondering if it's even a different material. Because I don't see the uh, the swivel of the of the lace, I'm not seeing that quite as much. I might input it. I might input it. So all right. So here's where's our arch. We'll do the arch running this way. And believe it or not, the arch is actually an underplane. So if you were to like see it with a thickness, there'd be this little thickness to it. And you could draw that thickness or you can actually shade it. I'm just gonna shade it. And then it looks like at the edge, there's some kind of like gentle, soft line. Maybe it was painted, maybe it was sculpted, a little like a little barrier, um, you know, like maybe some stitching. <clears throat> um, I don't know, I think it might be a good idea perhaps to, to toss in the armpit, which is concave and the biceps are convex. And then in the back, you have the back of the arm. Having, establishing limits, like this is where it takes place. Man, this would actually make a sweet, I don't believe in tattoos, um, but this would make a sweet tattoo. I feel like they should look to low relief sculptures from these ancient times for you know, at least get some good designs. Sorry, I, I don't, I, so many people have tattoos this day, these days, it's like mind boggling. Well, that would, this would make timeless, uh, a timeless piece of art, a, a tattoo, that's for sure. <laughs> I know, you're right, you're right. Um, I, yeah, this, I love this, this star up here, that faded star is just so, so beautiful. Okay, so here we go, I'm gonna get this first trapezoid. And I'm gonna try in my in my own mind, I'm gonna to try to get these vectors going in the right direction at the right angle and not make them too big. I always make these, I always start off too large. And then I gotta and then I've got to see how long that goes before it starts to make the turn in. And I, just, I can see how it makes the turn in. And then I gotta get the top of the T. So the right side is gives you the bend. Now it's not gonna connect. There's the right side and then it wiggles across and that's the edge. So it's the underside of that fold. And then it looks like there's one line in the middle, but there's actually two. So there's the inside edge and of the left side and then the inside edge of the right side. Wow. So the inside edge of the, of the right side makes almost a 90 degree turn. Look how that turns and then becomes the Swivel underside. The swivel underside doesn't connect. And then that's what's going to give us the second tier. And then it turns the corner. Why did I put that mark there? I don't think I put that mark there. It was there before. Then it turns, and then you get the underside and it swivels. Okay. There's my middle tent, and then I did my first right side. Well, I'll just finish off the first right side tent. Don't connect. Don't be clumsy. All right, so then it's going to turn the corner and head into our that tent number three. All right, so the middle fold comes out, makes this aggressive turn, almost horizontal. And that turn is gonna flow, it's gonna wiggle to the left. And then where that ends, I'm gonna go a little bit far beyond. And that's gonna give us the 
the, the top of the tent or the prism of the tent. It goes back up and that's going to disappear um, underneath the shoulder blade. Uh, not the shoulder blade, the uh, shoulder pad. And these have to pass underneath the shoulder pad because this is the, the shirt that allows for the movement so it doesn't get stuck. It's just a t-shirt, just a fancy t-shirt. Um, all right, so then this, that, that was the first bend and now I got to finish off my second tent. Just gonna wiggle down, ends, doesn't connect and we got to do the inside of the tent. And then that's gonna swivel under and almost make a 90 degree turn as well. And where that ends, it turns the corner and we're gonna get that prism. Um, this one takes an aggressive turn in and the flap is very small. Is interesting. And then that curls under one more time. And then it, where that turn makes the bend, it's going to come back up at a steeper angle. So the skin radiates out from a, not the skin, but the folds radiate out from a point that might be, you know, if I follow this line all the way up, and then I follow the center of this all the way up where those two intersect is probably just off screen. Let me zoom out a little bit. I can use a... Uh, oh yeah, that helps. Yeah, so if I took a line here, that's the edge. And then I see where the center intersects. It's right here. So I guess my point is, is that each one of these angled lines, even the two in the very beginning, in the middle, they're all gonna converge at a single point uh, off screen. And that's a unifying factor. That's how it's, it's, it's helpful for the, um, you know, we've talked about it like over and over again, but you know, this idea of theme and uh, theme and variation. And we have uh, the, their folds and each fold is a little bit different, but the way that the, the, what the, what the one of the unifying aspects is that they all radiate out from the same point. I got it. I think. <laughs> uh, I'm so happy. Um, this is, I mean, this is, to me, this is, this is, this is what we're drawing right now has a complexity and a simplicity that just made me fall in love with the piece. Uh, maybe I got it. Oh, okay. Uh, right when I think I have it, I maybe don't. Um, the way that the light is set up, and it's probably is the way that the artist originally intended to, you know, sculpt it to get this effect. Um, when, I draw, when I draw each one of the tops of my prisms, the tops of the prism, the, the, the part of the fold that's in front, the light part, that comes in front and then the background will be darker. So each line is gonna get faded into the background and then the next successive line gets faded gently. So even though the line does represent the top of the prism, it really belongs to the shading behind it. <laughs> and, you know, I know you guys have never heard of this piece and I never heard of this piece. And I asked myself, I'm like, why? Like, why haven't I heard of this piece? And I mean, you could call it obscure because it's so far back in history and classical art from you know the, the winged victory, the Nike, the Belvedere Torso, you know, all of ancient Greece, the Parthenon, all of the philosophers, all of the 
all of the political movements, all of the Colosseum and, you know, all of the cultural events that existed that was Rome um, and Greece, the Greece that led to Rome, I should say, um, all the philosophy. There's just like so much to know um, if you want, if you're interested in it um, and how it pertains to like kind of the way our, our system works, the way our thinking works. Um, but then to be to have this like really sensitive uh, portrait um, kind of, and it's not overlooked. I mean, it's like, it, it's held up as like one of the finest examples of archaic art ever. Um, and maybe it's just me not getting into archaic art, but I feel like, I feel like everyone would, everyone would love this. Everyone should know about this. Okay, one, two, three, so I missed one. Okay, three. Four. And um, this particular photo, um, the light has to be coming from the left a little bit at least, because you can see the inside of the, you can see the inside of the biceps here. How they have a, they've got a, a show, a tone, but it almost feels like it's outside because um, the light isn't really strong. It's kind of a soft light. Um, some of these, some of the, um, the underplanes here underneath those wiggle folds, they do, he does take us a little darker. Oh. The title of this piece is called The Steel, S-T-E-L-E, -E, Steel of A R I S T O N. Does it fit on there? All right. And it's by by Aristocles, Aristocles. Um, it's a, again, if you look up, there's a real, it's a, it's a, it's, it's, um, you know, it's got a big Wikipedia page and a um, lots of interesting terms that I'd never seen before. Like the, the term for those shin guards, those metal shin guards. Sometimes they were leather, but most of the time they're metal. So this one, the edge even feels like a little dirty. Oh, it's not dirty because it had been painted. I am, I did know that. Although uh, I do have to show this to you before you guys go, because it's too funny. It is just the funniest thing. They had a, a modern, they had a modern artist render what it might have looked like painted. Uh, let's just say they should have hired me. trying to soften some of those tones, you know, especially the, the way that the, the line it hits the, like the underside of the fabric meeting the skin. The skin is 
somehow a little darker. And I guess it's because because of the shadow overlaps it. This is this is the this is how he drew it. How about that? Let me show you the uh, this is the decoration they did on the arm. And there's that star, which I actually think he did a nice job on the star. But these were the those are the pants that we did. You follow. Does anybody want to show? I'd love to see it. Um, I think it's just, I think, I think it's just uh, like a mental, uh, what did I call it? Like a tongue twister. Kind Trevor, of like, can you, oh, excuse me. Artistic tongue twister. Can you please take your, take your, um, your pointer off the screen? Oh, yeah. Thanks. So you're going to say you can take the tongue twister and shove it. No. Um, all right. No. Stacy, did you get this one? Can I see yours? Does anybody else want to show? It's already 604. Uh, hold on one second, Trevor. Yeah. Mr. Method, I assume you kept on your other one. You know, I I thought that I got it, but I don't think I got it. You're gonna have to send it to me. I mean, I'll look at it now, but. Yeah, I, I don't think I have it. Yeah, you do. Was it is the top one, the second one? Uh, I don't know what you mean. Which one did you do first? The one that's on top or the bottom? Top. Let's see the bottom one then. <laughs> oh, they're very similar. And then I just started with right. a, a triangle because I can't, I don't think I'm seeing it. Kind of like the snake. It took me a little time to wrap my head around the concept, I guess. I don't know. Like I'm following your line work and then I, maybe I'm not trusting myself and then I'm stopping and I think I should just keep going with the flow. There we have it. Yeah, I, I think yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a little, I mean, they're, they're tricky, but I mean, it's, you can see them. I mean, you can actually pull paper like this. I don't know if I should do that. Hmm. Hold it. Back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And then cut it up the center. Yeah, yeah. Right? Isn't that what it's doing? Yes. Twisting it? Or maybe it's, it's a an accordion. Cool. It's like an accordion. Yeah. Oh, I figured it out that way. Is that it? Um, another light source. It's getting to go with Estelle. Can we see yours? It isn't letting me um turn oh, okay. like my camera on. Yeah, if you could text it to me, that'd be awesome. Um, and then Kaya, can we see yours? How'd you do today? It was last week. No. <laughs> um. So you did better than last week. I did worse than last week. Um, could I could I could I look at it? Anyway? Can I pass? Thank you. And Mr. Messick, can we see yours one last time too? I'm going to stop the share. Um, have to do that. Yeah, I kind of messed up the second one. Um, 
so I spent a little more time on it. Mm -hmm. um, and then I didn't get to the shading. So right now it looks very uh, flat. Okay. okay. Well, the shading, yeah, I don't know. The, the shading is super subtle. And there's, it's, there's not a lot of, uh, I don't know. There's, there's not any harsh shadows, but there are definitely lights and darks. Um, all right, Kaya, last chance. Finishing touches, Mr. Messick. Thumbs up, gotcha. Well received. Wonder what we're gonna do for, uh... anybody know what's doing for dinner tonight? No idea, my dad's in the cooking, uh, in the kitchen keeping up some unknown concoction. <laughs> Salad on my end, I think. I'm not sure. But I'm sure whatever is happening will be delicious. Oh, that's so nice. It's nice. Well, he actually makes a really good food, though. And I'm sure you tell him that. Yes. Whoever's cooking loves to hear that. Um, all right, y'all. I got to go. Um, anybody want to hold it up for the last 10 seconds? Mr. Messick? Yeah, I'm so close. You're pinned. It doesn't have to be finished. All right. It's not, it's not super great. I kind of just threw it together at the last second. But anyways, here, here you go. You can rob the other if there wasn't a light. But... Oh, man. That's... You got it. Yeah. yeah. You got it. <laughs> it was a little longer. It turned more into a drapery than like a sleeve. Yeah. But still, I mean, that's it's just the it's the concept that helps. It can apply, you can apply it to almost anything. Yeah. You got uh, it. Kaya, can I please see yours? I don't want to beg. But, but he's begging. But I will beg. So I can show the first thing that you. Okay, let's see it. That would be great. Okay. Oh man, the rain's back again. So I do, I do this. I do the. Oh, wait, what? wait, wait! Don't go away with it. <laughs> That's beautiful. Yeah, that is really nice. And I also I did it at first, and it turned into a snake. Yeah, yeah, you did that, and you did that one for real, for real. That one's really good. Oh, yeah. yeah. I can see the tube inside of the twist. Um, all right, cool. Thanks for showing. That was awesome. Um, all right, ladies and gentlemen, I will see you next week. Trevor, thank you so much. I think next week might... I, I have to, I'll, if it's, I think next week is 415 as usual, but then the summer schedule, we're going to switch over to three, which I think you guys know about. So, um, I will talk to you later. Bye everyone. Have a great week. Thumbs Bye. up. Thanks. Thanks.